We got the GR95QE from LG. This thing is a huge, it's a 45 inch curved ultra wide OLED that's gonna do 240 hertz. Oh, it's so fast. It's so fast. LG didn't even sponsor, whoa. <laughs> LG didn't even sponsor this one. They're so confident that, you know, these are gonna be beautiful displays that they just sent it to us. They said, hey, open it up, check them out. And I can confirm, I've seen a lot of these panels specifically. Uh, they're kind of the new hotness this year for OLED. So we're getting them in Asus, in Acer, like everyone's making this monitor. But LG makes the panels. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I hate styrofoam, I hate it so much. I actually opened this upside down, which is a little unfortunate because now I've just got the panel kind of hanging out here. Uh, I'm an idiot and uh, there's handles here that's always gonna tell you whether it's right side up or not. It's kind of expensive, but it's pretty good. We got a box, LG, life's good. Uh, we've got our remote. This thing does come with a re remote, so I'm actually pretty excited to check that out. What else we got? A bunch of cables. We got a cable clip or something. Yep, looks like that's for clipping cables on the back of your monitor. HDMI, probably a 2.1 cable since this is a 240 hertz monitor. Yep, 8K60, power brick for you external power brick people who love a slim design on the monitor and then you're okay with this big beefy power brick on the ground. Power brick's rated for 210 watts. I think this normally draws about 160, 170, but it can spike depending on how bright you're making your screen. What else they've got here is a USB A to B cable as well as a DisplayPort cable. Probably just 1.4 since there's only 1.4 connections on this monitor. I know DisplayPort 2.0 is barely a thing, but like I'd really like to see it on more monitors, especially when you're paying a hefty price. Oh, okay, here we go. This is what I really wanted. Display quality assurance report. Telling us all the measurement conditions, which is nice, like the color temperature, they checked it at, and the input signal and test equipment and all that. One piece, two piece. We'll connect our stand in a little bit here. It's a 45 inch display with a 21 by nine aspect ratio. You're getting an ultra wide here and it has an 800 R curvature. So like the reason why this box is so thick is so that it can actually support the monitor's curved nature inside this box. We've got our stand, we're gonna put it together here. Luckily, it's one of those super easy to put together stands where you just pop it in and you get the screw and you screw it down. I love these. It clicks down, but like this cardboard. I highly recommend that you actually do this on the ground. It's just gonna be easier to pull it out of the box. You're not gonna have to worry about dropping it on the floor, but we're, you know, doing it the hard way. And I'm gonna see if I can like, just lift this thing up. You ready? Okay. Oh my God. Oh no, get out of there. Ah. <laughs> Looks squeaky clean. Don't get me wrong, I, uh, I, I've checked out the Samsung Odyssey Arc and that is also huge, but that's like arguably a TV. This thing is still just straight up a monitor and oh my God, it's enormous. Wow, what a peel. One problem is that it's such a big display and this isn't LG's fault. This is gonna happen on just about any display this size, but it's kind of wobbly. Like I'm definitely, you know, giving it a bit more than would normally hit it. I think that ultimately you're gonna wanna put this thing on an arm and you can, it looks like it's 100 by 100 vase mountable. The stand isn't bad. It's definitely not the stand's problem. It's just the fact that this thing is huge. It's gonna be a problem to do that as well because this thing is 24 pounds with the stand and the panel itself is something like 18 pounds. It does have a bunch of motion. You can do height adjustment. Something the Xenion Flex can't do, by the way. There's no height adjustment on that guy. It can also swivel. Not much. You're only getting a few degrees in either direction, but you know what? It's better than nothing. You can definitely adjust it in your setup once it's there. And then I think it can tilt. It's not a bad amount of tilt either. We've got two HDMI 2.1 ports, a DisplayPort 1.4, optical audio, and a USB-B on the other side, as well as two USB-As and our DC in for power. And then there's also a headphone jack down here with DTS headphone X, as well as Kensington lock. I'm gonna put the cable cover on. Yeah, that was easy. It's a pretty beefy back here. So the, while the rest of the panel itself, thanks to it being OLED, it's super thin. You've got a lot of the computer components inside here, like your motherboard and everything. And honestly, that's kind of why I'm just, I'm perfectly fine with having the power brick like up here. Like if it's already, if you're already taking up this much space, take up a little more and then I don't have to take it up on the floor, but that's okay. I don't know if this is the Ultra Gear logo or the LG logo, but either way, looks good. We're gonna turn it on, find out. 
but not before a word from our sponsor, Secret Lab. Secret Lab chairs are designed to keep you comfortable for those long nights of work and play. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four-way lumbar support, comes with a magnetic memory foam head pillow, and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather. Best of all, a five-year extended warranty is included along with a 49-day return policy, so you're covered if anything goes wrong. Head to the link in the description and check out Secret Lab today. But not before I set this up. Oh crap, I gotta move the first to the other monitor first. This thing is huge. Look at the size of it when I'm just sitting right in front of it. And we've got it pushed like all the way back to the edge of the desk. I'm definitely a multi-monitor kind of person, but if I was going to go with a single giant ass display, it'd probably be this one. Uh, I'm definitely a bigger fan of larger curvatures once you get into a screen that's this size, or if you start going into 32 by nine territory, but otherwise everything seems to be working just fine right out of the box. It's cranked up to 240 Hertz, no problem. We're using HDMI 2.1, HDR, enable HDR, turn that on, boop. Yeah, so now we got 10 bit color, high dynamic range. It lists 603 nits here and Windows, I don't think that's right. Their own specs say that it should reach about a thousand nits of peak brightness in HDR, depending on what you're doing. It's OLED, so it's gonna have a 0 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, which is just absolutely insane. One of the nicest things about OLED is on top of the like super inky blacks that everyone loves, uh, what you really want is that every pixel is a dimming zone. It's just, it looks fantastic when you're watching HDR content. Absolutely stunning. The only problem is that with an ultra wide, YouTube doesn't have ultra wide videos. So we're just gonna have black bars here, but you can see that they just look black because it's OLED. It just kind of disappears. And if this was a dark room, you'd hardly even be able to see it anymore. It's such a good feature that you don't know you want until you've actually experienced it for yourself. I wanna try the remote. They've included it, pretty bare bones. You've just got like input, volume, brightness. Oh, actually having the brightness on the remote is kind of handy. Wow, that takes forever. I never wanna use this again. Yeah, the glare is actually kind of killing me. It's not the, it's not your fault, Andy, it's the studio lights. They're just at this like perfect angle where no matter where I go, I've got this one bar of glare. That being said, they do have a pretty decent anti-reflective coating, it looks like. So it's distracting to me personally, but I always find that these uh, kind of blurred out anti-glare coatings are much more of a distraction for me than if it was just glossy in general. When I've got the mirror finish, my brain tunes it out somehow. I don't know how to explain it. It's like when there's a blur, my brain is sitting there trying to figure out what that blur is. Anyway, to each your own, some people prefer gloss, some people prefer matte. This is 1440p on a 45 inch screen. So that's coming out to about 83 pixels per inch. For design work, this is probably not ideal. Like if I get in close, I can start looking at pixels and you know, you can get a bit of a screen door effect. It's not awful. And when it comes to gaming or just watching content like this, especially when you're sitting a little further back, particularly for a large 45 inch screen, it becomes not nearly as much of a problem as you might think it is. Wow, it's gorgeous. As for the OSD, it's not bad. We've got our HDR telling us that it's on. It's got variable refresh rate. It'll do G-Sync compatible and FreeSync premium, but not pro and, you know, just compatible, but that's okay. Game adjust. Oh yeah, we got VRR on and off, crosshair, FPS counter, game reset. So those are features that you see in a lot of gaming monitors, but I don't really know anyone that uses them outside of maybe the crosshair. Uh, picture adjust, we got brightness, sharpness. Uh, a lot of these are grayed out probably because of HDR. If I turn that off, I could probably adjust them. Uh, and then our input in general. Ooh, hexagon light. Oh yeah, there's RGB on this thing. Okay, we gotta check it out. My only disappointment is that it is there on the sides, but it's not present on the top here. It's a kind of minor thing, but I would have loved to see them actually complete the ring and go all the way around instead of just on the sides there, but it's pretty good. So the Xenion Flex doesn't have a height adjustable stand. And they said that they tested it with a ton of different people and like people of different heights were totally fine. Uh, with where the screen was, partly just because of how big it was. But I gotta say that I don't like it way up here and I don't like it way down here. However, right around the middle, it's actually about perfect for me personally. And then we wanna go to screen calibration, HDR, like below 100, you definitely see it, but plus 50K, I'm just gonna keep this at 50. While we're searching, I'll mention that this can do 98.5% of the DCI P3 color space. That's a lot. It's not quite like, you know, 100% would be better or like even over that would be fine because HDR uh, uses Rec 2020 and it can do 
much beyond DCI-P3, but that's still really good. It's pretty respectable. Another point to make is that this thing does not come with speakers. It's a really minor grievance, and I know that most of you are never gonna use your monitor speakers, but like, they're really nice to have, even if they're garbage, for those few moments where you just, you need audio and you have no other options. Man, this is crisp. I'm sitting super close, and honestly, it feels totally fine. Like, I actually really like this display. I'm kind of leaning towards um, going with one big display, kind of like what Linus is doing. I think that maybe I could get away with it. Like, you know, I, I like having Discord and other chat stuff up on a secondary monitor, but having this curvature when you're this close on a 21 by nine screen is about right. I don't like this much curve on a smaller display or on something that's not ultra wide. I just don't think it's necessary at all. But for something this size, especially when you're sitting like about this close, man, is it ever immersive. As for the vibrancy and the color and everything, it just looks fantastic. Like it really pops when you've got that HDR 1000. No, big T, how could you do this to me? But like, look at these lights. Like these are getting nice and bright and they're really popping. Like, especially that glare right there. And even the floor here, like that's definitely, it might not be a thousand nits, but that's pretty bright. For the first time in like a pretty long time, I'm actually really immersed. There's something about just having the screen kind of wrap around you that just like feels right. So while some might complain that 800R is too much curvature, I think in a case like this, it's perfectly fine. Now, one of the other major improvements on this display over previous Ultra Gears is getting OLEDs into that, uh, 240 hertz zone. 120 should kind of be the minimum on gaming monitors these days, just because we've seen how good it is compared to 60. And 240, I'm still not completely sold on. I don't think it's uh, necessary for most people. I honestly can hardly tell. Like if, if this was playing at 120, I'd probably be more than happy, but I gotta say it's, man, it's crispy. Like you don't ever feel like there's any kind of lag. You don't ever feel like things are taking forever to respond, especially when you've got that just insanely fast pixel response time that OLED's gonna give you. There's honestly not a lot wrong with this monitor. If anything, like it's just good. The pixel density, sure, you can argue that you'd like it higher and that's fine, I understand. But when it comes to just consuming content, I'm sitting pretty close, you guys. And like, this looks great until I start like actually getting in there and start looking for a screen door effect. The only real problem with this guy and Honestly, it's not that bad when you consider all the other alternatives, but this is 1700 US dollars. Now, it's OLED, it's 45 inches, and it's 240 hertz. I think at that price, it's honestly pretty reasonable. Hold on, sorry, I had to burp. Okay. The Xenion Flex, for instance, is using basically the same panel, but you can curve it. That thing is like two grand. Do you want to pay an extra $300 for a feature that you're honestly probably not gonna use that much? Or do you want a more adjustable stand? I personally would go with this guy. I, I think that the stand is just pretty decent, even if it's a little wobbly. Like I said, that's because the display is <laughs> huge. Um, and just the ability to mount it personally, like that just means the world of difference when it comes to a display this size. I don't know, Andy, maybe I gotta, Maybe I gotta join the one screen gang and just live my life like this. I probably can't afford it right now, so I'm not going to. <laughs> but for anyone who's looking for like a super crazy screen, I don't think you can go wrong with this. The only way you can is if maybe you're a graphic designer and you really should have a higher pixel density. Other than that, this thing is killer. Thanks for watching Short Circuit. If you wanna check out another one, check out the Xenion Flex. It's basically the same thing as this one, but it's got a really cool party trick that I don't know if it's worth the 300 bucks, but it's pretty sweet.